This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Stick around to hear more about the discount they are providing to the entire upper echelon community. Okay, before getting started, I need to warn everyone, this video will not be fun to watch. It might be enjoyable to watch for some of you, but it isn't going to make anyone feel good, it's not going to bring anyone joy, and it's not going to try and put some sort of positive spin on things, because global markets right now are anything and everything other than positive. This video is going to discuss a series of well-established events that, in my opinion, in tandem with each other, are going to cause global food shortages well and truly beyond anything the current media sources are willing to report. Now, the idea here is to connect a series of dots, which will, in turn, bring us to a logical conclusion, but it is entirely possible that those of you watching right now will come to a different conclusion. That is not wrong, it is not invalid, and while I may disagree with you, it's important to recognize that just because data suggests one thing, with a high probability, I might add, it does not mean that such a thing will happen with any degree of certainty. Basically, if you want to call me a doomer and say, stop exaggerating, everything is going to be completely fine, feel free to do so. And with that out of the way, let's officially get started. I want to begin by painting a picture of overindulgence and critical resources. Increasingly affluent countries, like the United States, for example, consume a disproportionate amount of grain per person, and according to an analysis done by Lester Brown in the climate publication Grist, Americans consume, on average, 1,763 pounds of grain per person per year. This total is actually broken down into direct and indirect consumption, but when compared to other nations on Earth, such as India, as an example, where residents consume, on average, just 440 pounds per year, with very little comparable indirect consumption, it can be seen as a rather colossal figure. Compounding this is the functionality of commercial livestock, where, according to the Cornell Chronicle, even back in 1997, the grain that is consumed by livestock in the United States alone could feed over 800 million people. All of this is to say that grain is obviously important, however, when accurately assessing just how important in terms of global food supply, it becomes incredibly complex, because grain is a foundational part of the food pyramid, and when you factor in relative consumption, such as the United States, on average, consuming four times as much per person when compared to India, it becomes almost impossible. Basically, grain is the foundation of our food system, not just for actual grain products, but also for meat, therefore dairy as well, and ultimately almost everything that we consume. So why am I saying all this? The answer is complicated, but the short version is that a reduction, even a very small relative reduction in global grain supply, can have severe consequences. And today, when looking at all the factors combined from a series of recent events, I would like to make the case that we will see not a small reduction in grain supply, but a large one, which will have extreme impact on many nations around the globe, moderate impact on others, and very few people in the world will be able to entirely avoid the consequences. Before going further, it's time for the video sponsor. Today, once again, that sponsor is Manscaped, and of course, they have all their traditional products, such as the Lawn Mower 4.0, cordless, waterproof, and skin safe, aluminum free deodorant, body wash, conditioner, plus a whole bunch more. But today is more so about their new, comfortable, and amazingly crafted boxer briefs. I am not kidding when I say this, these are the best boxers I own. Every time laundry gets done, I wear these first, and they also have six different color combinations which make them a perfect and excellent gift for Father's Day. Yes, Father's Day is coming up very soon, and Manscaped is one of the best possible gifts to give owing to its complete head-to-toe experience. Moisture wicking, anti-chafing, breathable fabric, with all kinds of other excellent products to choose from as well, Manscaped is the ideal place to shop for your Father's Day needs, and with that in mind, we have a discount to offer. If you order soon with the link down below in the description and code UPPER at checkout, you can get 20% off and free international shipping. Again, using the link down below in the description and promo code UPPER at checkout, you can get 20% off and free international shipping right now. Big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the channel. Alright, let's get into specifics here. March 22nd, 2022, World Food Program Executive Director for the United Nations, David Beasley, warned that we should get ready for hell in terms of global food supply. He warns that a coming shortfall in developing nations of critical grain can lead to destabilization and mass migration. But rather than simply focusing on the words of one expert, I'd like to connect a series of dots here that go well beyond, well and truly beyond, a condensed explanation and suggest, at least to me personally, that the grain shortages that we are facing right now will be far more severe than anything predicted thus far. First and foremost, shortages will be caused by the war in Ukraine. This is one aspect of the problem that is well documented and understood, but to thoroughly explain and provide visuals in the process, we need to look at the import-export market for wheat and corn. For starters, both Russia and Ukraine are some of the top producers and exporters of wheat, with substantial growth in wheat production for both of these countries during 2019 and 2020. 
When it comes to corn, Ukraine is once again a high-level player in the export market, producing 12.8% of the global supply by itself in 2020. These numbers, of course, are reflective of a pre-war environment, and of course, open kinetic-based warfare is going to hinder production. There is a significant downturn in grain production when a country is being actively invaded, with territory seized and occupied, especially during planting season, I might add, but something far more damaging is a Russian blockade of Ukrainian ports. In an effort to weaken Ukraine's ability to defend territory, Russia has blockaded Black Sea ports, which effectively cut off international grain shipments from the country, what little are still being produced, by way of the sea. Now, there are efforts being made to circumvent this problem or create some sort of treaty or anything like that, but when one of the world's largest exporters of both wheat and corn is effectively cut off from the market while also operating at a severely reduced capacity during wartime, there are going to be consequences. But here's the thing, that's just a very small part of the overall story, because another factor in this equation is fertilizer. Due to the way that modern crops are grown, aka monoculture, meaning one type of grain being produced by itself, not many, and that's been going on for decades and decades, as well as our consistent over-cultivation of the land, never allowing it to naturally replenish or planting different types of crops on top of it, commercial agriculture relies almost exclusively on nitrogen and other chemical fertilizers. Much the same as wheat, it turns out that Russia and China are the world's leading exporters of common fertilizer. And this means that a global economy engaged in economic warfare against those two nations is likely going to suffer from a reduced supply. However, it gets a lot worse because Russia has almost completely frozen their fertilizer export industry, jolting the market and creating a lesser known but significantly more damaging issue for a great many countries. When it comes to reduced grain shipments from two of the world's leading producers, that's already bad enough, but when there is a simultaneous and very large reduction in the supply of fundamental agriculture building blocks, aka fertilizer, that is far more damage, pound for pound, since it affects pretty much every single country on Earth, including those that grow the lion's share of their own crops, such as the United States. I'm talking about countries that don't necessarily import a lot of grain, but they grow their own. Now, this is where many stories conclude that pertain to the subject. Grain shortage bad, fertilizer shortage worse, but the reality is far more distressing than they acknowledge. In an effort to advance their geopolitical goals, Russia has also cut off grain to surrounding ex-Soviet nations. This might not affect all countries equally, but in tandem with other supply issues, it can contribute to destabilization and mass migration. Where are these people going to go when there is that level of destabilization? Think Europe. On top of this, shortly before the war began, Russia and China, China being the second largest producer of common fertilizer in the world after Russia, announced a pact between their nations against the West and America. Dictators Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin declared a new era in the global order with a 5,000 word agreement that goes further than any prior version between the two countries in history. To demonstrate this, we can look at the rising import-export trade between these two superpowers, and most notably, when the United States and other Western nations unveiled sanctions against Russia to hamstring their economy in the wake of invasion, China took on a much-needed soft economic partner approach, ultimately leading, after a drastic short-term fall, to the ruble regaining all of its strength versus the US dollar and beyond. Economic sanctions are meant to put pressure on a country, therefore curbing its military aggression. In this case, the Russian economy rebounded very, very quickly, and with stronger ties to China than ever before in history, as well as nearly a quarter of the world's common fertilizer market between them, this kind of relationship is very important. But let's go further. As of late 2021, China was hoarding over half of the world's total current grain supply. By itself, that's already somewhat alarming, but when you expand the scope of your consideration further, it gets even worse. Early in the pandemic cycle, China was outwardly claiming that they had zero cases of COVID-19. This is, of course, not accurate. It is merely an outward display of the Communist Party's ability to control information and protect their image. However, it matters because during a fairly significant time frame when they absolutely did have COVID infections and absolutely were hospitalizing people, as proven later by leaked records and new reports, the country operated in a seemingly normal capacity. Flash forward though, and instead of normal operations, China has implemented a very, very strict zero COVID tolerance policy, specifically for Shanghai. Now, I won't speak to the human rights abuses that appear to be taking place every day, that part is beyond the scope of the video, as insane as it is, but focusing on the effect in terms of global grain supply, we can see that the port of Shanghai has been almost completely shut down. It's difficult to pinpoint exactly how much lingering effect this has had in the following months, but according to various reports a few months ago, one in five container ships globally were stuck off the coast of China as a result of shutdown ports. 
and using a marine traffic positioning website today, it is easy to see just how many ships are significantly behind schedule, even flat out stalled indefinitely off the coast of China. Now, when I talk about these ships, a lot of people make the mistake of assuming that they're some kind of reasonably sized little boat. That's not true. They are massive container ships with thousands of containers that carry millions and millions of tons of resources. So when even just a few of these ships are stalled, it affects a very large area, let alone one fifth of the global supply. All of this places further strain on not just grain shipments, but the entire global supply chain. And when you remember the fact that China is hoarding over 50% of the world's grain reserves, is engaged in a soft alliance with Russia, jointly controlling a quarter of the world's fertilizer export market between them, and that Russia is then blockading Ukraine while limiting its own grain exports in the process, jointly controlling over 25% of the world's wheat, and blockading over 12% of the world's corn, we start to see that there is a food shortage in the making, whether organic or exacerbated deliberately, that is far larger than many of us are currently expecting. Now, all of this does not even take into consideration the other industries that Ukraine participates in. Ukraine is, by all definitions, one of the world's largest bread baskets. And with that comes a significant market share in numerous other commodities and food products. Their primary exported products are corn, wheat, seed oils, and iron. But they also deal with barley, soybeans, poultry, and vegetable products. The largest percentage of their exports goes directly to China which hoards those resources and operates in a soft anti-Western alliance with Russia after economic sanctions failed to disrupt the Russian economy. Effectively, China and Russia, through their direct recent actions, whether deliberate or unintentional, have cooperatively created a global food crisis that is far worse, in my opinion, than many media pundits are willing or able to acknowledge, with the ability to exacerbate the situation even further should they choose to, which is a bit alarming. In the end, there is next to nothing that you or I can do about any of this, except maybe stock up on food and store it safely in our homes. I advise this, I highly recommend it, but then again, it's almost always good advice to be prepared for whatever can come at you, so that's not really some sort of groundbreaking revelation. Anyway, that's it. I believe there are massive global food shortages on the way that are already about to hit, and they probably could get worse depending on the agenda of these two superpowers, China and Russia. But yeah, done. If you want to support, there are links down below, primarily Locals and Patreon, to get away from ad revenue instead of AdSense, whatever, on YouTube. It's unreliable. Also, Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative. Also, another creator to check out. Merchandise, social media, the sponsor, Manscaped. Check out their link down below in the description, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.